So on the run now has this crazy looking ink gel concentrate right here, which they're calling the ball pen fluid. It's essentially a super thick paste that is supposed to be used in combination with an ink or base agent to make that ink un buffable. It says right on the bottle here, the rich ink gel concentrate can be used 5 to 20% in relation to the solvent. Give buffers a hard time. And today we're going to be doing a few different things with this to see if this OTR 988 ball pen fluid actually does increase color saturation of tags and of course their resistance to buffing. We will be doing a full buff test with each formula we cover conjure up today and yes I did just say each formula because we are going to be experimenting in a couple different ways with this. Firstly, we're going to be using some Grog Buff Proof Ink, which if you haven't seen the video on the Buff Proof Ink, it's in the corner, but it could be a little more buff proof. So we'll be testing that formula out as is, and then to make it scientific, we'll be adding the ball pen fluid to the Grog Buff Proof Ink to see if the color saturation looks any different and if the buffability is any any different at all. And secondly, I know that the idea with this ball pen fluid is to use it sparingly, but I cannot resist the urge to use this in combination with an already very thick paint formula to see if it makes a nice metal head tag totally unbuffable. When I see thick gels like this, metal heads are exactly what comes to mind for me. So after our buff test with the Grog Buff Proof Ink times ink gel concentrate, we're gonna try something a little bit different with the Crink K66 paint formula and the ink gel concentrate by OTR as well. So with that being said, right now, I'm going to show you the entire DIY process that we're going to go through to make these sort of custom formulae and then we'll get to our tagging test and our buff test. Okay, just to be clear, this is the type of thing that you can experiment with in many different ways. If there's anyone out there telling you that there's only one proper way to use this or something like that, just know that they are stupid as hell, okay? So to start, we have the Superflow mop here filled with the Grog Buff Proof Ink. This is the same Superflow mop we used in the Grog Buff Proof Ink video. I just never use this mop, to be honest. If you wanna know more about the sort of unique nibs on these super flow mops so you can check the video in the corner in the description but we are going to be using this mop filled just with the buff proof ink first to see how just the formula as is reacts to a buff and then we'll beef it up with the ball pen fluid we'll do the buffs side by side so you can directly see the difference Just to be clear, you can always use this ink gel concentrate just with some isopropyl alcohol and make a nice ink formula that way. That's perfectly valid and it'll work for you very nicely. One of these bottles is 100 milliliters and it only costs you 10 US dollars. So if you use it properly, AKA pretty sparingly, this stuff will last you a long, long time if you're gonna make formulae that way. But like I said, there's an endless amount of experimentation you can do with this OTR ball pen fluid. And that is why today we are experimenting not just by making a normal formula, but by making a couple different formulae so that we can really see if it does make a difference for permanence and so that all of you out there can see if here we're making a top notch formula that might be a good one for everyone to know and use or if we're doing something completely disastrous here. So I'm not gonna talk too much about the Grog Buff Proof Ink specifically. I just wanna show you that the tags are there and it's pure Buff Proof Ink there because we do have a whole video on the subject of the Buff Proof Ink that you can check out. <laughs> Okay, hi guys. It's a little hard to see on screen, so I'm gonna put a mark on the mop here. But that is showing exactly how full this mop is. It's about half 
full. So what we're going to do is we're going to add 20%, another fifth to that to make it one sixth in total ball pen fluid here. Now these ball pen fluid containers, you just have to stick a nail in there. It's, it's pretty easy to get a nail in there to create the opening. Once you do that, remove the mop nib. When we're done, we want it to be filled about there. A rough estimation of what a fifth is. One thing I do want to emphasize is this stuff is actually hard to squeeze. You can tell it's a thick liquid when you are squeezing it there. Like, look at how dense that is. That's basically black. Now, when you are mixing an ink concentrate like this, you really do want to have a mixing bowl in your mop. But since I don't really have an extra one, I don't want to dig one out of another mop. We're going to do it the real old school way and just use a bit of hardware. Normally, you'd want to use like a bolt or a nut. You shouldn't really use nails like this because they can sort of get caught up in the bottom of the nib and mess with the flow. But I'm really not about to care about that right now. Just a little pro tip here with skiz for you guys. We haven't done one of those in ages, but the more of this concentrate you put in your ink or in anything really, the longer it's going to take to dry. Just keep that in mind. You can hear the nails work in there, mixing everything up for us. I've shaken this for about five minutes, actually. I just want to make sure it's nice and mixed. But right now, we're going to do a couple tags A to see if we can see any difference in the color saturation here. Are we getting a more dark mixture? Are we getting a more consistent mixture with less of that two-tone effect? But also B to set up our buff test. This here is an unfinished surface. That's going to be one where we just look at the differences between the two buffs and see which does better. But we also have the unfinished smooth smooth surface that's traditionally very, very hard for these inks to settle onto. There's nothing for the inks to grab onto and stain. It's a lot easier to buff them on here. So if this beefed up BPI formula can stick on here, it's doing something right, let me tell you. But let's get to these tags, see what happens. Okay, there's a couple ways you can see the difference here with the OTR ball pen fluid added. It's subtle, but they are there. I'm not gonna try and convince you that there's much color difference. I don't really see it, but you could mistake it for being a little bit different in color, but that's because of one of the other things we're gonna talk about right now. which is the thickness of the formula. It has gotten a lot thicker. And I think that's responsible for it looking a little bit darker. More evidence of this is you can see with like the KYOI tag that just had the buff proof ink, you're getting the bleeding away from the lines there. Even on the drips, they're bleeding outwards, giving you that very jagged looking edge of a drip. Whereas when you introduce the ball pen fluid here, you're seeing that these drips are nice and smooth around the edges. There's no bleeding to the sides, anything like that. Furthermore, even on the letters, you're getting that nice, almost three-dimensional flow towards the bottom of the letters, giving it a nice lip there. I'll give you a close-up to show you what I'm talking about. So really, the difference that you're seeing here is the thickness of the formula. It's giving it a very beautiful, solid look when you're writing with it, and it's really assisting the drips, I think. I definitely prefer those more than like sort of a runny, all over a place type thing, but those are really the main differences you're seeing. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to give specifically the two bank tags time to dry as well as the bust and the KYOI tag, and then we'll see what happens in that buff test. Okay, so while these dry so that we can do a proper buff test on them, I do wanna show you something that I've never seen done before with this kind of concentrated ball pen fluid, because hey, if it turns out, then this could be an awesome graffiti hack for all of you guys to use as well. But when I saw this concentrated ball pen fluid, it 
immediately reminded me of the thicker sort of three-dimensional paint formulae such as like the grog rough stuff paint that comes in the grog metal heads or even just the crink paint formula that comes in the crink k60 and the crink k66 here so what i actually want to try here just to see what happens is we're going to throw some ball pen fluid into the crink k66 this is a k66 that hasn't broken on me yet go figure and we're just going to lay a few tags down and see if it can withstand a buff on a smooth surface with a more three-dimensional paint slash ink concentrate formula. Those three-dimensional formulae are much harder to buff, so let's see what this can do. Okay guys, I'm not gonna lie, I don't really know how much of the OTR988 ball pen fluid I put in this Crink K66, but it was a lot. If I had to guess, I'd say it's like a 60-40 split here. Part of the reason I did that was just because I wasn't seeing the ink in there. But when you see this, those who have a bit of experience using specifically the Crink Red will know that this is a lot darker than the Crink Red. And basically it just mixed in perfectly with the Crink paint formula. So we have something here that is a concentrate, but probably just because it's the same base as the Crink paint formula, it mixed in perfectly. You're left with a bit of a darker red, but it actually made it a perfect consistency to use in the Crink K66, a little bit more so than the Crink paint itself, dare I say it. Just to prove to you that the ink is actually in there, because some people might not be able to see the difference in the red color on camera. When I was trying to get the formula right, I used a piece of paper just to test it out and you can see the front is that nice juicy thick paint but if you turn it over and look at the back there is that seeping effect that an ink on a paper usually has you know it bleeds right through that paper and soaks up the ink so we got these beautiful beautiful thick three-dimensional drippy tags here that are hopefully gonna be a lot more powerful than they would be if they didn't have that ink gel concentrate ball pen fluid in it by OTR And because of how three-dimensional this is, it's gonna take a little while to dry. But the tags here done with the beefed up Grog Buff Proofing plus the ball pen fluid here are dry now. It's been about a couple hours. So obviously the longer you let things dry, the harder they are to remove, but most of the effect is captured here. And we're gonna see in that buff test what the effect actually is. But guys, it is time for this buff test. We're gonna start on the smooth surface because that's less likely to have tags stick around on it. And we're just gonna start with the all-purpose graffiti remover. It's the trim clad one. It's the one that I generally find works on just about everything. But first, let's see what just the buff proof ink does for our benchmark. So we're not seeing any ghost here. And as you can see, we're cleaning that up pretty good. I'm not gonna waste my time and get it nice and pristine right now. But now on just a smooth, glossy surface, let's see if the buff proof ink plus that ink gel concentrate has any chance. I don't find with this particular graffiti remover you need to let it sit very much. Some graffiti removers you do want it to sit and grab a hold of it. I think this one recommends that you do that as well. I've never found it's been necessary. And that is roughly the same result that we're seeing here. Actually, maybe not. We might be getting a ghost here. Let's clean this up. Okay, okay. I know I'm not the only one seeing a ghost there. Oh, guys, look at this. Now, I know it's not super clear, but there is a definite ghost here. I'm really hoping you can see that on camera. Okay, so just to summarize that result a little bit, with just the buff proof ink on the glossy surface, no ghosting whatsoever, but there actually is a bit of a ghost there with that bust tag that has the gel concentrate in it. And for a glossy finished surface, that is actually really, really impressive on its own. 
And now just on a nice unfinished surface, let's see the difference here. Again, the tag on the left has the gel concentrate in it. We'll start off with just the one that just has the BPI. I'm not gonna buff the whole tag because you know, we're on a schedule here. So I won't lie, you can almost see a ghost there on the B of that bank tag with just the buff proof ink, but the bust tag that has that gel concentrate by OTR in it on the glossy surface actually has a much more clear ghost than the bank tag, which is just the buff proofing on the non-finished surface. So that should be saying something, maybe about the buff proof ink, maybe about this OTR 98E. But anyway, let's get to the real test here now. Well, <laughs> you can see that color difference, but that might be the only thing we're seeing here. Ah, I don't know. It's unclear, it's unclear. We need to make it clearer. Well, you know what? There is a bit of a ghost there, but I'm a little perplexed because it's whiter than what's surrounding it. So I think that's just because I haven't cleaned this up very much. So if we did clean it up, I think there'd be a bit of a ghost left of the bank tag that has that ink gel concentrate or ball pen fluid by on the run in it. So what I would sum this up as is frankly just sort of a weak ghost. And that almost makes me think that they're being a little bit conservative with the amount you should be putting in there. I'd be interested in upping the dose of that ball pen fluid. I'm just not convinced that that five to 20% for the ratio of the ball pen fluid to the solvent is exactly what most graffiti writers are looking for. I don't know. Something to play around with. If you guys have tried this at all in more than a 20% ratio, let everyone know in the comments how that worked out. I just the more information we can share about this, the better, because the thing with this DIY stuff is it's all about experimentation. Speaking Speaking of which, I'm excited to see what this crank formula has to offer for us. Okay, so the tags done with the K66 formula and the ball pen fluid are pretty much like dry to the touch now. These thick, thick ones, you know, they can take like hours to dry, of course, but dry to the touch, let's just see what this does. You know what, I am seeing a bit of a ghost. Now there is a bit of a ghost of this short tag here. It's certainly not magnificent by any means. I don't even know if you can see it on camera. I'll try and give you a look at it. But again, just what this tells me is that possibly giving it a bit more time to just settle into the surface would make that ghost of the tag more prominent. One thing I do know for sure though is just the Crank K66 paint formula the, that comes in the K66. That alone would not have left anything like this. But with that being said, I do want to talk to you guys about the uses for this ball pen fluid by OTR besides just the permanence aspects of it. Because yes, permanence is important in terms of buffability, depending on what kind of writer you are, but this has some other uses I think need to be emphasized a little bit. So let me talk to you about that. Okay, so I just wanted to add a quick word at the end here to say we already sort of knew that this at least has potential or being a hugely helpful additive in terms of permanence permanence, but I do want to remind everyone that this can be a helpful concentrate if you're just looking to change the composition of a formula for other reasons as well. We did see that it thickened both the formulae that we made today. To me, it made them look both a lot nicer and it made them feel a lot nicer to work with as well. And this is one of the only graffiti products on the market today, I would say, that is designed specifically for experimentation. On the Run has actually done a great job by recognizing that the DIY part of graffiti is still very much alive and it's worth exploring. So it might actually be worth picking one of these up. $10 for 100 mils isn't bad when it comes to this stuff. It lasts a long, long time. And hey, let everyone else know and me in the comments some of the crazy ideas I know some of you guys must have about how to use this on the run ball pen fluid. There's got to be some great ways out there that you guys are thinking about. If you're looking to know more about some permanent, permanent inks, the incredible ink by on the run also is a formidable ink by itself. But this ball pen fluid by on the run could be what turns the incredible ink into the weapon of the century. So you can check out a full tagging test and buff test of the incredible ink by OTR on screen right now if you want to know more about that. I hope I'll see you over there in a bit. Until then, peace.